title of my message today is Self-Reliance to God Defiance or uh, From Self-Reliance to uh, Self-Destruction. I, I haven't picked really. I'll, I'll leave it to you. But um, I was looking through scripture and I was looking through what to preach about and God has really put on my heart to speak about pride and self-reliance, uh, particularly because it is so common. It is something that affects all of us. I mean, I'll be honest, guys. It starts with me. I get self-reliant sometimes, and I get, I get proud sometimes. Um, but I know that all glory belongs to God. And so tonight, I want to just talk about this and uh, more in depth. <laughs> and the first point I have is, uh, at first, we always seek for God's help. When I just got married, and I was like pulling all my funds together, making like $15 an hour, and my wife is in school, and I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, Lord Jesus, I need you. Making a, a, a grand and 50 bucks every two weeks is tough when you got to pay rent, and then your bill is like, your bills are like through the roof. Well, not, not when you just get married, but like electricity could be really expensive, water bill could be really expensive, depending where you live. When I lived in Auburn, electricity was expensive. Now that I live in Sumner, water is expensive. So it's like uh, whichever one. But when I just got married, I was like, how are we going to pay all the bills? How are we going to get all the furniture? Because we literally have a bare apartment. I mean, I mean, my, my, my mama hooked me up a little bit, but it's like <laughs> it ain't going to stay. And how am I going to budget right? What am I going to do? And so... There's this stage of when you try something new, when you do something, you really rely on God. You really seek for his help. Another example would be um, like when you get a new job, right? First you're praying, you're like, Lord, I just put in my application. Can you please get me in for an interview? And then you get an interview. And then you get the job. So your prayer is answered. And then you start praying about, Lord, help me do all the tasks. I have no experience. I don't know what they're asking of me. Sometimes they ask me to do something, and I go, uh-huh, but I have no idea what they asked me. Um, things like that. So we really rely on God. And then, of course, tough situations, like a final, right? We heard a lot about finals. I know my wife has one coming up. Keep her in your prayers. Um, you like something new, like you transfer to a new school, for example, and you're like, Lord, help me find friends. I don't want to be a loser. I want to have some, somebody to sit on, on, on lunch and uh, somebody to talk to. And uh, when you're sick, you cry out to God and you say, Lord, Jesus, heal me. Pray in the name of Jesus. You might ask pastor or leader to pray for you. That's great. We're happy to do that. Um, or just wor when you're worried and stressed out. And what's interesting is God is always faithful. God will always bless you. Me and my wife, we had more than enough. We were able to give and give generously. Praise God. We, um, God always provides for everything in, in, in your job. And if your job goes slow, like my job is kind of slow right now, uh, slow down a little bit. I don't know why, but God always provides. There is no reason to be worried. And I, I also have a praise report. We, we, we get uh, our reviews and our raises in April, the whole company. We don't ever, basically don't ever get raises other than in April once a year. And out of my department, half of it didn't get raises. Another quarter got a little bit. And I got to be blessed enough to be in the top. So praise God. All glory to him. It's not my doing. It's just what he does. So God, God gave me a good raise this year, and I hope to be able to bless him with it. That's that. But see, where I'm getting at is... As we get all these blessings and as we get God to provide for us, um, we might get a little bit too confident. Because when you look back, then you're like, well, do I need God in my marriage? I got it all figured out. I got the job. I got the money's coming. Every two weeks, I'm good uh, for a few days. Um, <laughs> until you pay all the bills. Uncle Bill always knocks on the door. Um, well, you get, you get the friends at school that you've been praying for. You're not a loser anymore. You're actually in the cool crowd. But do you worship God and do you talk God with your friends? Or are you doing mischief? Or are you talking useless stuff? Are you, well, what are you doing? 
um, we get a little too overconfident and then we get well and you're like, I knew I'd recover. I have a good immune system, just like my mom, just like my grandma, just like my great, 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 great grandma. Um, and what happens here is God does help you. God does walk you out of a situation, through a situation. And then you're like, well, I did it myself. It was kind of me. I kind of knew that was coming. I passed the test. Well, it must have been all the hours I was studying. Otherwise, how, you know, how would it work? Well, don't get, don't get me wrong. You have to study. You do. But ultimately, it's up to God. God takes you through everything. God makes your, God makes your path for you. You make the plans. He makes the path. And so I want us to, number one, rely more on God. And number two, be thankful. Don't be arrogant. Don't be foolish. Don't, don't take credit for what God has done for you. If somebody says, hey, you have something really cool, like Slav, you have a cool guitar, man. Praise God. <laughs> this is something he's given you to worship with. Hey, you have a cool job. Praise God. That's the way God allows me to provide for my family, to contribute to the church and to the vision I have for me and a vision the church has. Awesome. So give credit where credit is due. I'm going to use my, uh, my example of my uh, triplex. I, I guess most of you know that I, I, I bought this unit and I was like, I was freaking out. I was like, Lord, first of all, where am I going to get the money for down payment? Second of all, I'm already looking. What, what's it going to look like? Where is it going to be? How can I do this big remodel on it? How in the world would I ever be a landlord? I have no idea. And I'm, I'm praying for like every little thing. I'm like, Lord, provide, please help, please help, please help. And he does everything. We had, in that, we had just the right amount for a down payment. Praise God. Um, we found an amazing deal on the market because God is good. Not because I'm really good, because God is good. He's given us an amazing deal. And, and the guy I was working it with that does this all the time, he's like, I've been buying properties for years and years and years, and I still cannot beat your deal. You had a great deal. Praise God. Praise God. That's awesome. He provides. But we have to seek, right? Um, and then everything goes through. And looking back, my friends are like, oh, well, th this is great what you're doing. This is great. Um, and I can go back and be like, yeah, I collected the funds. I did work. And I closed in the deal. And I found a deal. And I did the remodel. And da, 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 da. I can go on. But I got to remember this is God. This is God providing for me because I have a vision with my wife that we want to do something and have an income outside, like do a missionary, and we want to have an income on the side that we don't have to work. This is God's providing. He sees your heart, and he will give you accordingly. God's will, God's bill. You guys all know that one, right? So do not fit your eye where it doesn't belong. Remember to give credit where credit is due. And yeah, this is God working. This is God at work. Even through finances, some people think that God is at the church, God is at the family, but not really with the, where the money is. God is there too. He cares for you. He provides for you. You just pray. But don't think that God will just give you something when you do nothing, right? It's like an example I heard from my friend at work. He goes, this guy asked God, he's like, God, I want to win this lottery, a million dollars, and I'm going to watch it tonight. Please give me the million dollars. And so he watches it. He doesn't win. He, he prays again. He watches it. He doesn't win. It does it like for like three or four weeks. On the fifth week, he gets a vision from God. God's like, give me a chance. Why don't you at least buy a, lo a lottery ticket? <laughs> <laughs> so in the same way, God will, God will provide for you. But you, you, ha you have your end of the deal, buddy. You, you, you got to try on your side. And this, this is what got me through, to, through the entire purchase. I literally went through this verse. And it really is getting me through the, from the moment I got married and became independent to, to this moment. I always look for, at this verse, and I, and I just love it. It says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of, your, of their lives. And I already said it today during prayer that the Lord, 
He loves every detail of your life. You should be thankful for every detail of your life. You should, you should worship God for every detail of your life. He is there with you. Don't think he abandoned you. Don't, don't think you only need God when you're in trouble, when you have a test, when you're sick, when you're not doing well, when your business is going down. That's not the only time you need God. God delights in every detail of your life. And so glorify him and walk it with him and give credit where credit is due. And I'll keep coming back to this because I want to talk about pride. And I want to talk about self-reliance or relying on other people. It is absolutely God who gives everything. And so tonight I want to say there is no reason for us to be boastful and to be proud. There is no reason for us to go off and rattle about what I have, what I don't have, what I do, what I can't do. Um, all glory to God. Just say all glory to God. And God will be praised through every circumstances. I want to talk about a Bible character, and I'm going to do a little bit of reading. If you guys have your Bible, if you could open to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. I'm going to talk about a guy named Asa, A-S-A. -A. I like how that, that, that was perfect. <laughs> money. This is where the money is. All right. King Asa reigns in Judah. And so there was this guy. His name was Asa. He was a king. Can you imagine? What is it? Asa. His name is Asa. <laughs> a pun for you there. Um, so King Asa, I practiced my whole sermon with Asa, so now it's hard. <laughs> king Asa, <laughs> King Asa was a king. Can you imagine being a king? How awesome that would be. Like you could do anything and everything. And he was, yeah, it's Asa. <laughs> Okay, where's my point? <laughs> okay, let's just read. We're going to dive right in. Uh, chapter 14, verse 2. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. For he removed the altars of the foreign gods and the high places and broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images. He commanded... Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to observe the law and the commandment. Look at his great beginning. This king just became king and the first thing he does is he turns people's attention back to God. He's an awesome guy. Um, unintentional. Uh, he's, a, he's a great guy and it's kind of like us, right? He tr entrusts everything to the Lord. He's like, this is just my beginning. Like me in marriage, like you in your job, like you in your school. And he says, I want everything to go right. I want everything to go smooth. I want to entrust everything to the Lord. I want the Lord to walk me through the entire thing. I'll try to speak slower. Um, and you, It's like us praying, God, I just got this job. Can you help me? Right? And, and he sets everything up perfectly. And he completely trusts the Lord. And... Um, God will answer whatever need you have. But the question is this. How do we not get used to the blessings and not take them for granted? How do we not grow arrogant? How do we not grow proud and boastful? See, God will always provide. And I love Igor's sermon that he had a while ago. It keeps coming back to me. How do I not... Abandon the blessings that follow me and start actually chasing the blessing? How do I pursue God and let the blessings chase me instead of chasing the blessing? See, this guy, he, he began really well. And, and look at this guy. He had a strong army. He was a good spiritual man. He brought people back to God. And later down in the verses, it says he had 580,000 men ready for battle at any time 580,000 men under your control that's a lot armed man he, he had a whole kingdom but that's how many soldiers he had and check this out what's fun, uh, what's uh, what's interesting is he gets he gets tested look at verse 9 and Ethiopian it Ethiopian armies coming then Zerah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million men and 300 chariots. 
and he came to Beresha. So Asa went out against him, and they set the troops in battle in array in the valley of Zifta and Maresha. And Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord God, for we rest in you, and in your name we go against the multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people who were with him pursued them to Gerar. So the Ethiopians were overthrown, and they could not recover, for they were broken before the Lord and, and his army, and they carried away very much spoil. How awesome is this? Check this out. This guy, this guy has only 580,000 men. And an army of a million comes and threatens him. Just when you think everything's great, just when you think you're all powerful, just when you think everything is, you have everything, you're, you're the number one guy. And you could, be bo you could be boasting about it. You say, I have 580,000 men. How much do you have, peasant that's scrubbing my floor? How much do you have, uh, a simple foot soldier? How much do you have, a woman at the well? How much do you have? I have 580,000 men. And then out of nowhere, boom, a million is invading. And what do you do? If you were proud before, you have to humble yourself. Humble yourself and let God help you through the challenge. Because you alone cannot do it. This is beyond you. So very often we look at other people and we think we're better. We think we got something they don't. We think we, we dress better. We drive better. We live better. But realistically speaking... We must not be prideful. We must not consider others better than ourselves. We must humble ourselves because God can make bigger problems arise if we're proud. Because God opposes the proud. So in all simplicity, if I could say something that's just, as, if you remember anything from this sermon, just do not be prideful. Love God and thank Him for all that you have. Right. Consistently. If you remember anything, please remember that. So King Asa, Asa, Asa was strong, but nowhere near powerful enough to face his problems, right? And we're going to skip down to chapter 15, verse 1. Fifteen years passed by. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. He was a prophet. And he went to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Odad, the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. He also brought into the house of God the things that the, his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. And there was no war until the 35th year of the reign of Asa. So this is year 15, and there was no, no war until 35th year. So for 20 years, God gave him peace. See, in the beginning, we notice that he begins reigning, and he right away takes out all the idols. He right away throws away all these false gods, or the gods of the people that surround him, all these other tribes. And 15 years later, prophet gives him an encouraging and a little bit of rebuking message, and he has to do it again. See, this is kind of like us. This is kind of like our life. We, we clean up our mess. We come clean before God, and then sins, sins kind of just come back. Sins come back. And what we, we, what we must do is when you hear today that you must humble yourself, when you hear today that you must repent of your sins, of our faults, that we must come clean before God, when we, we must be honest with ourselves. When you hear it again, like, like Asa heard it first time, like he heard it 15 years later, clean up your mess again. Change your course. And God says, if you are with me, I will be with you. But if you forsake me, I will forsake you. We don't want to be forgotten by God. We don't want to be left behind. 
We want to serve him diligently. We want to serve him wholeheartedly. And therefore today, the same message goes to us. I'm going to use a little example of an ungodly man. Hitler. We hear about him all the time in the media, being compared to a lot of people, um, particularly Trump. Whatever. He wanted, I'm going to talk about the man himself, he wanted a thousand year reign for Germany, a thousand year Reich. But he wanted to do it without God. He wanted to do it on his, on, on his own. He had the best army, the most trained army, and he had a rocket technology that was unseen before. He had a jet engine technology that was unseen before. He had, what is tanks, tiger tanks, and there was an advanced version of a tiger tank that was like, you can't destroy it. Like, there's nothing you can do. Um, he had submarines controlling the entire ocean, and he had Enigma, the machine that was coding, and there's like a million possibilities shuffled every 24 hours. Good luck. Find out what we're doing. He had everything. Germany was really advanced in technology and culture and everything. But the only problem is he wanted to do this reign without God. And when he started in early 1930s, mid-1930s, he only got through 1945 until he shut himself in a bunker. So much for a thousand year reign. He kind of put two extra zeros there. Because his reign was only like 10 years. If that. So where I'm getting at is, you could have all the best stuff in the world, but without God, you will never succeed. You can have all the technology, all the culture. You can have the best car, the best house, the best everything. Without God, your life is miserable, and your life is going nowhere. So what you should do is you, you should repent, come clean. Stop being prideful. Stop being boastful. Be humble. Can I use the best example in the Bible of humbleness? A God who created the universe, God who created everything, is born into a manger. Not in a palace. Not into a kingdom. He's born in, born in an occupied land, heavily taxed land, into a manger to a simple carpenter and his wife. God who created everything. Take, take an example of a humble man. And Jesus even says, come and learn from me for I am humble and meek in spirit. Come and learn. Come and learn. So today, let's cast our pride aside. Let's cast our boasting aside. Let's just be humble. Let's worship God in honesty. Let's, let's not consider others better or worse than you. But let's consider them as brothers and sisters in Christ, equally in need of salvation, equally in need of correction, reproof at times, and equally of needing encouragement and a friend. Going forward. Going forward. This is probably chapter 16 already. Yeah, chapter 16 now. In a 36th year reign of Asa. 36th year. Remember he said 35 years there will be no war? Well, year 36 comes around. But Asha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come into Asa king of Judah. So he basically built some kind of a fortress or some kind of a wall or something to, to stop people going away and coming to Judah. He blocked them. He was intending to have war. Then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the king's house and sent them to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, let there be a treaty between you and me as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad heeded king Asa 
and set the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. See, what happened here is Asa went into the house of the Lord and he gave away the treasures that belonged to God. It's equivalent to us surrendering our faith and surrendering what we believe in for temporary security, temporary rest, temporary peace. I do not recommend taking anything from God that belongs to God. And I do not recommend trading the treasure inside your heart for temporary useless things of this world just to be better, just to have something, just to have protection, just to feel security, just so you can have this better or that better, or just because they have it. Do not trade God's riches. Do not trade your salvation for useless things, for temporary things. And the prophet gets a message to Asa. Verse 7. And at the time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have re relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of king of Syria has escaped from your hand. When the Ethiopians and the Lubim were the Ethiopians and the Lubim, not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord, pay attention to this verse, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Let me read this last verse again. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore from now on you shall have wars. See God, he wants to remove a problem from your life once and for all. But when you seek your own solution, when you do self-reliance, when you rely on yourself, on your friend, on your mom, on your job, on your paycheck, on your house, on your car, on anything other than God, you're making the problem worse. He says the king of Syria escaped from your hand. He was not even at war with king of Syria. That means God would give Israel to him and king of Syria. He would have had all that territory. And now he made himself friend with them. And now he can't fight him. And now he's going to have wars for the rest of his life. See, God wants to remove the problem from your life once and for all. God wants to get rid of even a hint of problem. You know what a hint is? It's like, have you ever been by a bonfire? And you, you could smell smoke on your clothing. You never got burnt. You had no sparks fall on you. You, had, you did not even have smoke go directly at you. But... But you're in your car, you know there was no bonfire in your car, but you could smell smoke. That's a hint. That's a hint. God wants to remove even the hint, even the slightest thing of a problem from your life, of, of a sin from your life, of self-reliance and pride from your life. Uh, but if you rely on yourself, you're dooming yourself. So looking back, Do not say it was me. Do not say I, 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 me, 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 now, 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 now. <laughs> Do not say I did it. Do not say it was me. Thank God for everything he has given you. And we're going to look at Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and exist. For some of our own poets have said, we are his offspring. See, God himself says, in him we move, live, and exist. Even the fact that you're breathing right now is God's mercy. Even the, the fact that you just took a breath and your heart made a, made a beating sound, that's God's mercy. So how can you be prideful and think you got it all figured out, you got it all in control, and you got it better than some other guy, when you're... Your very own heart is in God's hand, and he could stop, stop it from beating at any given moment. So instead of being prideful, submit to God who owns it all. Submit it to him, and live humbly. Live humbly. And it says that, <laughs> how does it say, uh, blessed are humble, for they will inherit the earth. And out of all the blessings that God lists, Jesus lists, 
on the mountain prayer, Matthew 5. This is the first thing he says. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. You want to do good? You want to be known? You want to you be well off? Be humble. Yeah, that's good. Be humble. That's good. Don't try to shut other people down, backstab them, smack them on the head to come lower than you. Be humble, and God will raise you up. Amen. If you want an example, read, read about Joseph at the end of the book of Genesis. We're going to go into prayer, if I could have somebody on keys, but uh, before uh, that, I'm going to read, read another verse. And in the 39th, this is verse 12 of chapter 16 of Chronicles, Second Chronicles. And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his disease was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. He, he, he was looking for doctors and not the Lord. He did not ask him. He did not pray to him. And it says, so Asa rested with his fathers. He died in a 41st year of his reign. That's five years after the wars broke out. Jeremiah 17, 5. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. Kind of like King Asa did. They are like stunned shrubs in a desert with no hope for the future. They will live in a barren wilderness in an uninhabited land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. Tonight, let us praise God in all of our circumstances, whether good or bad. Tonight, let's completely re rely on the Lord. And tonight, we will give Him all the credit and all the thanks. Are you guys ready for a prayer where we can give Him thanks? Are you guys ready for a prayer where we can ask Him forgiveness for thinking we got it all figured out? For being prideful and boastful.